of new tonight at 10 digging into a story that brought national attention to trains. Many of us saw this video back in February, this massive crash, the smoke and the fire from a derailment of a tanker train cars in Ohio. Well, now we're learning a recent study has found Colorado ranks 26th in the nation for total train crossing accidents nationwide. Yeah, another recent report shows there is a high likelihood that a catastrophic hazardous materials event could happen in Denver. As our investigator Katie Wise shows us, there is a plan to address that concern. A train derailment in Denver's Globeville neighborhood last February. Three train cars plunging into the South Platte River. Fortunately, no one was injured, but community members like Stella Yu worry for the future. Buildings that are so close to the, the rail line has gives us a lot of concern. And if there's any kind of, of accident that happened, toxic air, the, any of the spills would really impact the, the neighborhood around. We obtained this engineering study evaluating Denver's freight train infrastructure. It shows a catastrophic hazardous materials incident is highly likely that more than 100,000 train cars carrying hazardous substances rolled through Denver in 2021, carrying gasoline, oil, sulfuric acid, and sodium hydroxide and freight is only expected to increase over the next few years. This is all about public safety. Denver City Councilwoman Debbie Ortega has spearheaded an effort modeled after work in Canada to make Denver safer. The hope is that as a city we can be a model for other cities across the country to be able to look at how to do it right and how to make sure they're doing everything they can to address the public safety factor. She's proposing an ordinance which would create more safety requirements for new building permits near train tracks, including a 100 foot buffer and evacuation plans. We want to make sure that we've done everything we can to protect the people who will be living and working in these new buildings adjacent to the tracks. But federal data shows there's a higher likelihood for hazmat truck crashes on Colorado's highways. In Colorado, there were more than five hazmat incidents causing monetary damages on highways for every incident that occurred on a railroad track in the past 10 years. And the number of hazmat incidents on Colorado roads have increased by 60 percent, costing over 13 million dollars in damages in the past decade. Like this fiery crash in 2017 on I-25 near Orchard Road that left one person injured. The fire burned for more than three hours, adding an additional layer of concern for people living close to both interstates and rail lines. We've moved airports very far from, from the urban center. Can we do that with trains? Train tracks are built around people. They're really for delivering goods and services, right? and we just need it for mostly for goods and it's, it's still ne necessary but perhaps toxic materials can be transit uh, a little further away the city paid over a hundred thousand dollars for the engineering study a cost councilwoman ortega says is well worth it her proposed ordinance hasn't made it out of committee yet but ortega is hopeful it'll be approved this summer